Welcome, welcome on our summer, no, winter solstice, <laughs> winter solstice class today. And of course, the traditional celebration around this time of year is celebrating the light returning. So this is the shortest day of the year. And the other thing that I want to say, as well as celebrating the light, which is a, a beautiful thing, and we all need something to celebrate right now. Uh, but I also want to say to not deny the darkness, right? The darkness is also a gift. And uh, just, um, yeah, so there's something called spiritual bypassing. And you may have heard of that term, but you may also be familiar with it in another um, another way of referring to it. But the idea that we deny all of our challenging feelings and only kind of connect to or try to connect to the feelings that feel good. And the problem with that is that those challenging feelings, if we push them down, have a way of kind of pushing themselves back up. And they can often come out when we least expect it, when it's most inconvenient. And so I encourage you today as you celebrate the light to also not push away the darkness, the challenges, the hard, the hard things to get through as a human, because actually facing those and going through them makes us stronger, makes us more open to the celebration. So go ahead and celebrate, um, but not at the expense of pushing down or pushing away what, um, what may be bubbling up under the surface, which isn't so comfortable. So we're gonna start seated today as we always do. And uh, again, you can sit on a chair or on the floor, whatever is comfortable for you. So finding your comfortable seat. And let's just take a moment to settle, sort of mentally and physically settle here in this space. So you can close your eyes and tune into the gentle rhythm and flow of your own breath. There's no need to change anything here. Honoring the inhale and the exhale. So the inhale is where we draw in energy, hopefulness, faith. And exhale, we soften, we let go of tension but without denying whatever might be under the surface, whether that's a feeling of anxiety or stress or tension. So whatever is there under the surface, feel free to tune in and check in with that. But I encourage you to not get stuck there either. So we don't wanna get stuck in only being with the light, but we also don't wanna get stuck in that downward spiral of the dark. And so in this way, our breath can remind us on the inhale, celebrate the light. On the exhale, be with what's deeper, what's darker, what's more inward. So inhale, drawing in the light, celebrating the light, exhale and feeling into what might be below that surface, if anything. And we don't have to go looking for what's challenging or dark because there's always times where we come back to that in this life. So if you don't discover anything now, there's no need to force or push, but simply be. So take maybe a minute or two in silence together to simply breathe in and feel the celebration to whatever extent it's available to us today. And on the exhale, reminding ourselves that to really grow, we need to go deeper into our, into our darkness in order to fuel that return of the light. So each inhale, breathing in, celebrating. Each exhale, honoring the darkness. Breath is such a beautiful metaphor for this balance of light and dark energy in our lives. And when we move with the breath, it also kind of signifies that same dichotomy. So as we inhale, the heart opens and there's this expansion around the heart into the light. And as we exhale, we allow ourselves to go inward, tucking the chin in, bringing the energy into that 
darker, more subtle place. And then inhaling, inviting in and celebrating the light. Exhaling and honoring those places of challenge or darkness that we all live with. You can stay with that visualization, that intention as you do this movement a few more times, tuning into your spine, how it feels. And then let's, this time, as we're coming up and breathing in, lifting the arms, and then exhale, again, rounding and lowering the arms, lowering the head. So inhale, expanding, exhale, again, coming into that contracted, darker place. Right, we'll switch it up this time. So as you come into that inhale position, we'll stay there. If you feel like the shoulders would be more comfortable with the arms lower, that's fine. We'll draw the elbows back, shoulders down, elbows down a little so you're not crunching the shoulders up. Good. And then exhale, bring the hands together. Elbows can come either together or a little closer than where they were. <laughs> inhale, open. Exhale, and you can again bring the head down around the upper back. Celebrating that opening into the light and honoring the darkness. Great. And then arms to the side, stretch them out, stretch your fingers, feel some stretch up the arms. You can draw them back a little if you feel that like that's a good stretch for you. Bend them a little if that feels better. And then let's slowly lower the arms down. Let the hands relax. And if you're sitting on the ground, your fingertips might come to the ground. If you're in a chair, your arms may just hang down to the sides. And we'll lift the shoulders up, breathing in, draw them back and exhale as they come down. So inhale to lift, exhale back and down. And you can stay with that same intention and visualization if you find that useful. As you inhale, you're expanding into the light. Exhaling, honoring the dark. Finding that beautiful balance. Okay, and then let's bring the hands up in front and do some circles for the wrists. You can circle with your hands relaxed and open, going each direction. And then you can try making gentle fists and seeing how that changes the stretch, if at all. And pressing the palms together. Lowering the heels of the hands down and keeping the shoulders relaxed. Feeling some stretch across the forearms and wrists. And putting some good pressure into your hands, but not so much that it feels uncomfortable for your wrists. So you want to feel some stretch, but not feel that there's tension or pain. You can try moving the heels of the hands apart and keeping the bases of your fingers together for a little different stretch. And then try taking the backs of the hands together, fingers down and gently pressing the backs of the hands together. And you can start to roll around here. Just really whatever way works for you, no particular pattern. Just rolling the hands together, you bring them in first or out first. And give the hands a little shake. Okay, arms to the sides. And we're going to rotate the lower arms coming down, up, and around. So down. So the upper arms more or less stay stationary. The lower arms move. So there's a rotation that happens in the shoulders to allow this to happen. And the movement of the elbows. 
getting into the joints, lubricating the joints. As the winter sets in, the joints tend to get a little stickier. We tend to get a little more sedentary. So keeping things moving. Great, palms up, shoulders down, spread the fingers wide and slowly lift the arms. You can bend the elbows if that's more comfortable for you. Bringing the hands together and then down to the heart where again, we'll put a little pressure into the palms and then slowly release. You can let the hands rest on your thighs if you like or down at your sides, whatever's comfortable. So work a little bit with the neck now, turning the head to one side until you feel like the first level of restriction and not forcing beyond that point, but just feeling that gentle stretch. And then coming down, quarter circle down so the chin is toward the front of the chest, pausing there for a few breaths. And then rolling the head to the other side, lifting the head and looking over that shoulder. We'll come back down to the center, chin toward chest. And lift straight up. And then one ear toward the shoulder, opposite shoulder, staying nice and relaxed. Coming to the center and then taking the ear to the other shoulder. And we're not trying to force the head here. Just trying to gently invite a little bit of stretch in the longer side of the neck by letting the head relax to the side. And letting that opposite shoulder relax down and away. Let's come back to the center. We're gonna look over one shoulder again. And this time sweep the chin all the way down and across to the other side and then gently sweep back and really honor your own body, your own limitations. If it feels right to you, you could make a full circle. Being always cautious not to let your head fall back behind your shoulders. If it feels better to continue with the half circles, then stay with that. And if you're doing a full circle, you might switch directions for a few rounds. Wonderful. And then coming back to the center. Let's take the feet just a little bit wider apart so you've got a good solid foundation here. And we'll move the torso a little bit towards one thigh over to the other and back up. And you can make your circles quite small to begin with and notice where you feel a bit of stretch or sensation. Eventually, if it feels right for you, you can make your circles a little bit bigger. I really encourage you to stay connected to and tuned into the experience. And then rotate the other way a few times. And coming back to the center. You know, even with our bodies, we sometimes sort of try to deny the, the challenges and, and not acknowledge where there are, are tightnesses or challenges or pain in the body. We just kind of push that down and keep going. And that can create problems in the long run um, in that we, if we ignore things over time, they can actually get worse without us realizing. So part of the practice of yoga is to slow down and to really tune in and to notice and you know, I often say, don't push yourself into pain. And I absolutely mean that. But when you notice that something is painful or something is uncomfortable, making a note of that, checking in, coming back to that, and maybe getting it checked out if it continues, right? So that we're not just denying, we're really honoring 
ourselves, honoring our own pain and, and seeing it as a teacher and a messenger, whether that's physical pain or emotional pain, right? What does this trying to tell us? And do we need to create some action around that? So let's uh, move into some side bending. You can bring your hand to the floor if you're sitting on the ground or to your chair, if you happen to be sitting on a chair. And the other arm can lift up or if that's uncomfortable, it can maybe be down on the hip. So we'll work with one side at a time, lifting up, reaching over, keeping your weight on both sit bones so you're not in danger of tipping off your chair. And then we'll lower the arm just to keep the shoulder nice and relaxed and get some movement for that shoulder. So lifting, reaching over, and releasing, coming back. Don't worry too much about how you're breathing. Just make sure that you are breathing. It's easy to hold the breath. Forget about that important aspect of the practice. Now you can keep moving dynamically if that's what feels best for you. Or if you like, you can stay for a few breaths. And again, if having the arm up in the air creates tension for your neck or your shoulder, either letting the hand come down to the shoulder or to the waist or even down to the side. When you're ready to lift up, come up slowly. Let's bring the hands onto the thighs again. And we'll inhale, arch, and exhale, round again. Again, you can come back to that intention of opening to the celebration of the solstice and drawing inward into that dark place of so much richness, so much information, so much learning about ourselves and we really integrate all aspects of who we are. You're coming back to a neutral spine now. So your sit bones are evenly supporting your weight. The other hand to the floor, to your chair, will lift up. Again, whatever arm position works better for you if this isn't comfortable, and then over to the side and back up. So you're exhaling, reaching over, inhaling, coming up. Or as I said on the other side, it's totally fine to just breathe and move freely as long as you're breathing. Again, you can keep moving dynamically. You can just stop and wait if you have had enough of the side bend, or you can stay and breathe into that length along the side of your body. Okay, coming up to the center again, bringing your hands onto your thighs, and again, to rebalance the spine, a little of that cat-cow movement, inhaling to create extension or arch in your back, exhaling into flexion or rounding the back. And let's add the arms again, lifting up with the breath in. This time we'll add a forward bend. So bringing the chest toward the thighs, letting the head release forward and repeating. So we'll do that move a few more times. Same intention here. So every breath that we take today you can come back to that idea of welcoming and celebrating the light on the inhale, going into and honoring the darkness on the exhale. Okay, one more time this time, if you like, and it's comfortable for you, you can stay in the forward bend. You could rest your elbows on your thighs or your hands, or even bring your chest right down toward your thighs, whatever's comfortable. If it's comfortable for you, relax your neck forward. You can even do a little movement side to side, very gently with your head, if that feels good. Again, to release the neck a little more. When you're ready to come up, you can bring your hands onto your thighs and slowly lift upright. Reach the arms up overhead. And then big circle, slowly lowering the arms and reaching out to the sides. Letting the arms come down to your sides or rest on your thighs. Close your eyes, or if you prefer to keep them open, just soften your gaze. And take a moment to, to notice. So we've been working really from the pelvis up 
head, the neck, the shoulders, the rib cage, the waist, the lower back. So notice what you're aware of in your upper body and how that maybe relates to how your lower body feels. And we will get there, don't worry. So we're ready to move on to standing poses. So you can come upright. And if you're on a chair, keep it handy, but just move it out of the way. And so coming to stand, comfortable position, feet more or less under the hips. So we'll start to work with the lower body from the bottom up. So lifting up your toes, giving them a little wiggle, spreading them out a little bit, and then bringing them down. And then we'll rock the weight back, lifting the toes up, rock the weight forward, coming onto the balls of the feet. You're not actually lifting your heels or lifting the balls of your feet, just lifting the toes a little as you rock back, bringing the toes down and rocking a bit forward. And then if you feel confident here, and you could hold on to your chair if that's helpful, you can rock forward and then start to lift the heels. Rock back and just lift the toes. If you want, you can try lifting the balls of your feet, but it's really hard to balance on your heels. So again, lifting up onto the balls of your feet, lifting back and just rocking back a little and then forward and then if you want to add in the breath and the arm movement, as you rock forward and maybe lift the heels, you'll inhale and lift the arms. And as you sink the heels down and rock slightly back, you'll exhale and lower the arms. So three, three pieces, lifting the heels, lifting the arms and working with the breath. You can do one, two, or all three of those pieces. You do have to breathe. <laughs> You don't have to coordinate your breath, that's optional. Right, if you're feeling like you want to challenge yourself a little bit more this morning, try lifting up and staying for a couple of breaths. Right. And then let's lower if you're still upright. Excellent. So for the next one, we'll work uh, with the ankles a little bit. So one foot in front of the other, and just a small step as if you were walking and normally you just take a step forward and bend both knees. And so really what we're looking for is a stretch in the back ankle. If you feel a little wobbly here, use your chair to support you. So both knees a little bit bent, one foot slightly in front of the other, back heel on the ground, just feeling that stretch in the back ankle. Okay, let's switch sides. The same thing on the other side. A little step, a little bend, stretching into that back ankle. and then come back to mountain pose. So now we'll stretch the front part of the ankle. And this, um, you wanna be a little bit careful with this one because sometimes when we're pointing the feet in this way, the feet will tend to cramp up a little bit. This isn't a stretch that we normally do in the course of life. So very gentle, toenails down, and just let the weight of your leg hang. And you probably feel some stretch in the front of the foot. It might be quite intense. You can back off a little bit. Try not to press down um, unless you really feel like you want more stretch and it would feel good to you. And then you can put a little gentle pressure down. And then the other option here is to roll from the baby toes to the big toes. So you're spreading that stretch across the top of your foot. And then you can place that foot down and switch sides. So toenails down, top of the foot down. And again, 
just the weight of the leg creating your stretch to begin with. If you want a little bit more and you feel comfortable with that, you can press down a little into the ground with your toes. And then if you also, if it would feel good to you, you can rotate, roll sort of side to side, big toes to baby toes. And if your foot starts to cramp, you're gonna stop this right away and you can just turn the toes under, which we'll do next. So coming back to the first foot, you're gonna come up onto the toes of that foot. So the ball of the foot and the toes are on the ground, heel is lifted, and we're going to push the heel forward to feel a stretch in the arch of the foot. So when we stretch and gently open and do movement with the body, we're opening up the body. And, and what that tends to do is create a feeling of expansiveness. And the idea of expansiveness is the idea of light. Right? Light expands, it appears and it expands. And when our body is contracted, we feel dark, we feel heavy, even depressed. So just moving and opening the body can bring a feeling of lightness, of openness to the body. So other foot, so I'm gonna take the ball of the foot down and press the heel forward till you feel a stretch in the arch of your foot. And then bring that foot down. So you can keep one hand on the chair if you, if you like, if you need to for balance. And then lifting one leg to circle the ankle, one way and the other. And then you can give that leg a shake, let your ankle just flop around. And then bring that foot down and we'll switch. So lifting and circling. Each direction. Right, and then floppy ankle, give it a little shake. And release. So let's bend and straighten the knees and that will not just work the knees, but also the ankles. And there's a little flexion in the hips as well. So the simple movement actually, it's all three joints moving a little bit. And then let's bring the hands back to the chair if you're using a chair. We're gonna step back, this time a little bit further back than the ankle stretch and place the heel. It doesn't have to come to the ground, but toward the ground and you'll probably start to feel a stretch in the calf, sort of just below the knee somewhere in that back leg. So you can also lift the heel and press down with the heel. So then we're actually working to strengthen and stretch the calves a little bit. Hold for a couple of breaths, as long as you're comfortable here. And we'll step forward and switch sides. So again, stepping back, enough to feel a stretch in your calf. So if the, strip, if the step is too small, you're not gonna feel anything in the calf. And if it's too, too wide, you may feel a little uh, less balanced. So bringing the heel either down to the ground or almost to the ground, wherever it reaches, it doesn't have to come down. And then if you like, you can lift onto the toes and release the heel. And then heel down for a few breaths, pulling up on the kneecap so the thigh is engaged, pressing down into the heel. Right, and then we'll step forward. Right, and take a moment to feel from the knees down where we've mostly been working so far in the standing poses. So you might notice the front of the shins, the back of the calves, the ankles, the feet, the tops of the feet, the arches, the toes. Just notice what you're aware of, what sensations are present from the knees down. 
And then we'll keep working with the joints, with the muscles, bringing some light, bringing some ease into the body today. And uh, for the next one, you can keep your chair facing this way, or you might bring it so that the seat is facing you if you want a little bit more out of your forward bend. So we'll stop, step back from the chair, um, maybe a foot or so, and we'll take one foot toward the chair. The other foot turns to the side a little bit so that both feet are planted. So this is, if we were doing warrior pose, this would be the kind of stance you'd be in. With a little bit of a bend in the front knee, you can reach forward and take the chair on the edges of the chair with your hands. If it feels better to have your hands flat, that's fine. And then making sure the position of your feet is comfortable and we'll bend and straighten the front leg. Now by straighten, it doesn't have to come all the way straight. We're looking to feel a little bit of gentle stretch now in the top part of the leg and between the knee and the hip. So the hamstring is now stretching. But nice and easy, just easing into the stretch turning the stretch off and turning it back on again and gently letting things warm up. If it feels good to you, you can stay with the leg in the straighter position so that you're engaged in that stretch. If your leg is straight and you still want more stretch, think about letting your tailbone lift a little, chest lift a little and arching the back. For most people, that's not a necessary adjustment because there's plenty of stretch in the hamstrings already. But the more you round the back here, the less stretch you're gonna feel in your hamstrings. You can play around with looking for a nice, long, even spine, maybe a little arch, maybe slight rounding if you need to take some of that stretch out. Great, let's bend the knee, step, forward or back so the feet are together and then we'll lift up breathing in and exhale to release. This might feel a little bit lopsided between the two sides now and we'll even things up by taking the opposite foot forward the other foot back turning the back foot out so it's fully planted bending the front knee a little and reaching down for your chair and then once there you can just really adjust and make sure the feet are in a good, comfortable position and then start to move that front leg a little more straight, a little more bent, inviting a gentle stretch into the back of the thigh. Again, you could stay for a few breaths as long as that's comfortable for you. The knee can be bent, straight, or somewhere sort of in between. Again, arching the back is going to invite a little bit more stretch into the back leg, a little rounding, a little less stretch. You can actually just stay stationary and arch and round the back a little to turn the stretch off and on. You might play around with that just for fun. So then when you're ready, stepping the feet back together, soften and bend your knees a little and then inhale and lift up. And then exhale to release. Great. So now we'll um, stretch the front part of the um, hip and thigh. So we just worked up the back of the leg. So now the front a little bit, and it's very similar stance. So we're gonna, I've turned my chair around, so I'm gonna be a little more upright. Um, you may or may not want the chair at all here, but one foot toward the chair, the other foot back. And for this one, the further you step back, the more you're gonna feel the, the stretch in the front of the thigh. So we're gonna turn the hips toward the chair or towards the front foot. And we're gonna think about drawing the belly button back a little bit and dropping the tailbone down. So as we do that action, we're inviting a stretch up into the front part of the hip. This is sometimes a little subtle and hard to, hard to find. So if you don't feel much there, that's okay. Can, whichever leg is in front, you can take that hand either to the hip or to the chair. And then the other arm, we're going to reach up. And then 
imagine a long line from your top hand all the way down. So it's the same leg and arm. Leg is back, arm is lifted. And feel that stretch all the way through the side of the torso into the hip and the thigh as much as possible. And then let's release. We'll step the feet together. You can pause for a moment and notice the front of the leg that was back versus the leg we haven't stretched yet. And see if you're aware of, of any difference in that leg at all. And if not, that's quite fine too. Like we're all tuned into those sensations a little differently. And, and for some people, the sensation is very strong in a pose or for others is very, very subtle. And that can change pose to pose, of course. So now we'll take the other foot forward and stepping back with the opposite. Finding that comfortable stance, front knee is bent. And again, we're gonna think about keeping the upper body upright, drawing the belly back a little without kind of rounding the back. We're just thinking about gently tilting the pelvis back. So the belly button moves back, the tailbone moves down, and you may feel some stretch when you do that in this front part of the thigh of the back leg. And then from there, whichever foot is forward, the hand can come onto the hip or if you're using a chair, it can be on the chair. Other arm reaching up. And see if you can feel that stretch through the abdomen, through the hip, through the thigh. Maybe up into the shoulder and armpit. And then let's release and bring the feet back together. And releasing the arms to the sides for a moment. Just notice now we've kind of worked from the top down to about the waist. And we've worked from the bottom up to the hips. And so now bringing some integration, taking the feet apart, bringing the hands to the hips and letting the whole body Swing and circle around the hips, back to, the, to our center. Circling both directions. Right, and then let's come back to the center. We'll do a forward bend. You can do your forward bend to your chair. Usually the seat of the chair for most people is a, uh, an acceptable height. Or you can bring your hands to your thighs or your knees or reach right down to the ground as feels right for you. So I'll demonstrate first toward the chair and then um, I'll move away from the chair. So you can do either. So taking a breath in, reaching up, soften your knees. So important in a forward bend to keep the lower back safe. In fact, the whole back. Coming up with the breath in, and again, coming forward. If you choose to do this without the chair, just letting the hands come to the thighs or the shins or the ground, but still knee soft, and there's no goal. We're not trying to get anywhere. Just bringing the hips and the spine and the whole body back into it feeling of alignment, and tuning back into the breath, inhaling, opening and celebrating the expansiveness of the life, exhaling and honoring, being thankful for those darker moments that really help us to appreciate the light and expansion even more. If you like, you can stay in that forward bend for a few breaths could be elbows or hands on the thighs or reaching down. Could be hands on your chair, stretching out or being over your hands for a little more ease. So finding the expression of this forward bend that works for you. If holding the forward bend isn't comfortable, you just come right up anytime. Softening the knees to lift, coming up with the breath in, and exhaling to release. So let's pause again. We worked from the top down, the bottom up, we met in the middle. Just check in with your body. Perhaps you can feel a little bit of that, of that lightening, expanded feeling. 
that we get from moving, from stretching, and from rotating the joints. So we're going to move into a lying down position now. So you can take your time to get down onto the ground. You're gonna come onto your back. As you come down onto your mat, if you need to support your head for uh, your neck to be more comfortable, please do. Bring your hands onto your body somewhere and just tune into the breath for a moment. Again, come back to that intention of breathing in spaciousness, breathing in the expansiveness of light. And as you exhale, softening into the darkness, honoring the darkness, not pushing it away or denying it at all. Being with both the celebration of light, the cocoon of darkness, that place we go into to grow, to come back into the light, and this constant weaving in our lives of dark and light. One is not necessarily better than the other, they both have their place. Just like the inhale isn't better than the exhale, the exhale isn't better than the inhale, they're both necessary parts of the breath. Ready, you can take the arms away from the body, let them rest on the ground, somewhere about 45 degrees between your shoulders and hips. So the arms are relaxed. You can have the feet about hip distance apart, knees over the ankles, and then gently moving into a twist. And you can start with just a little movement each way to tune in and check in that this is a, a good move for your back today and your hips. If it feels good, you can add a little bit more, taking the knees further to the side maybe turning the head the other way. And repeating that at your own pace. If you want to coordinate your breathing, you'll inhale as you come to the center, you'll exhale as you go to either side, but you can also just move freely with your breath. Gradually coming back to the center. You can lift the hips up a little and bring them back down to align the spine and then knees to the chest, one hand to each knee. And you're going to bring the knees in towards you as you exhale, move the knees away as you inhale. And repeat that movement at your own pace. And then bringing the feet down and let your hands rest on your body. And we're going to move one side at a time, but diagonally. So the right arm, left leg, and then vice versa. So if you take your right arm and stretch it up, take the left leg and reach it out, breathing in. And then exhale and bring the knee across to the hand and to the knee. So the other hand could just be on the ground just to get it out of the way. So inhale, expand, exhale, draw in. So 
So we're going diagonally, right hand to left knee. And then this time, taking the hand to the knee and you can extend the other leg. And if it feels right to you, you can add a twist here. So you'll roll onto your right hip. You can let the left foot rest on your leg or come across your leg or to the floor behind your leg, wherever is comfortable for you. And you're not trying to bring this knee to the ground or anything like that, or not trying to keep the shoulder anchored down. You can move the arm down or bend the elbow if that's more comfortable. If this deeper twist isn't comfortable for you, you can come back to just holding the knee in, maybe rolling a little into the twist and coming back out if that feels better. Right, and then let's bring that foot to the floor. Bring the other foot to the floor. We're gonna shift the hips just in case they've come off kilter, back to the center. And then your right hand can rest on the floor, left arm and leg extend out. Breathing in and then exhale, knee to chest. So once again, bringing the knee to the chest, you can extend the other leg and then maybe roll onto that side, letting the foot come to the floor or to the thigh, or it can just hang there if that's where it ends up, that's totally fine too. And finding the gentle twist that feels right for you or maybe rolling in and out of the twist a little bit if that feels like a better option. Sometimes folding a pose can start to feel a little like you're straining, feels more fluid and connected to move in and out. So whatever works. Right. And then when you feel complete on that side, you can roll back onto your back, releasing the knee, foot to the floor, and both feet coming to the floor. Again, you'll probably want to lift your hips up, shift and bring them back down. And then again, knees to chest. So we want to balance out the spine and the hips again after that gentle twist. So forward and back with the knees again. You can coordinate breathing if you like, inhaling as the knees move away, exhaling as the knees draw in. And then any other movement. So if it would feel good to rock side to side, go ahead, rock side to side, circle around if that feels good. The knees can stay together or they can circle independently. And then maybe eventually just hugging the knees for a moment, perhaps rocking a little side to side very gently. And bringing both feet down to the ground. Letting both arms relax on the ground beside you. And we're going to press into the feet. And as you press into the feet, let your pelvis kind of rock back a little bit and uh, your lower back come into the ground. And then if it feels good, you can start to gently lift up and gently lower down. Just lifting and lowering the hips any amount. So it could be a little higher or maybe for you it's just barely off the ground, or maybe not even off the ground. You can press into your feet and just feel that little bit of movement in your lower back and hips, and that might be enough for you. So anywhere from just a gentle pelvic rocking motion to lifting all the way up and all the way down. 
Just a few more. For those of you who feel strong today and want to stay a few breaths, you can certainly stay in the pose a few breaths. You're also welcome to keep moving or just come to relax at any time. Lowering down if you're still up. And again, any kind of movement here to give the back a little stretch after that gentle back bend. So whatever movement feels good to massage the lower back, just stretch it out a little bit and come back to a sense of feeling aligned on both sides of the spine and hips. Take your time, whatever movement might feel good to you now. We are heading next into our relaxation of Shavasana to end the class. So take your time, make sure you're comfortable, add extra layers if you need them or more props if that would be helpful for you. And of course you can come to sit if you're more comfortable sitting than lying down or if you feel like you might require a little extra alertness. Once you've established a comfortable position, let your body start to settle. Come back to your breath. Inhaling, feeling yourself expanding and receiving light. Exhaling and allowing yourself to go deeper into that dark, rich, internal womb-like space. And then inhaling, feeling the expansion and light. Exhaling and going deeper, downward, inward. Celebrating and honoring the dark. Let go of any expression on your face. Let your face just be natural and relaxed. Whatever expression comes naturally when you relax your face, let it be. Let the area around your eyes soften, around your mouth relax, across your forehead, skin of your scalp letting go. Let the weight of your head sink down, the muscles of your jaw and into your neck relaxing. Your shoulders drop even more. Your arms, your wrists, your hands release. Feel the weight of your rib cage. And as you exhale, feel your rib cage getting even heavier. That sense of dropping down and being supported by the earth. A feeling of lightness, openness, and expansion as you inhale, a softening and sinking and releasing down as you exhale. Relax your belly and your lower back. Soften, relax, and release around the hips and the pelvis. Relax the buttocks, the thighs, the knees.
Relax your calves, ankles, and feet. In the ancient holy texts of India, the Vedas, the sunrise is described as a beautiful young woman rising up to greet the day and all its potential. And on this shortest day of the year, honoring that sunrise, the returning of the light, but also honoring the dark the richness of that more internal place where we go down and in, where we grow like a seed under the earth in darkness. Mm -hmm. Aksharam Brahmasam Vitam Gayatri Chandasamata Idam Brahma Jushaswanaha Come back to your breath, back to the idea of breathing in the expansion of the light. You can let the breath, the inhale now, get even a little deeper as the days start to get longer. As you exhale, continuing to honor the dark, that rich place, like the darkness where a seed is planted and nurtured to grow. And gradually add a little bit of movement as you're ready. You can move your fingers and toes, your ankles and wrists. And of course, if you want to stay a little longer and enjoy a little more of that Shavasana time, relaxation time, feel free to do that. And if you're ready to move on with your day, you can eventually roll onto your side using that position as a gentle transition eventually coming back to seated as you're ready. And then bringing your palms together. Let's take a couple more of those balancing breaths, inhaling, expanding into the light, exhaling and honoring the dark. And carrying these two beautiful forces with us. One cannot live without the other. When we deny one or the other, we can really get stuck in a place that's unbalanced, unhealthy. So finding that balance, finding our health and knowing that this is the way of life. This is the way of being human to honor all parts of us. Namaste. a beautiful day, a lovely holiday.
and stay safe.